Well, the Phoenix Suns, who trailed in this one going into the fourth quarter, pulled out the one-point victory. 108-107 final over the Kings, keeping their hopes for that final playoff spot, that playoff berth alive. Sitting now a game behind the Pelicans. They'll close out their season in Milwaukee on Sunday, needing a loss from the Pelicans to secure their spot in the West. Entering the last weekend in the NBA regular season, there is so much at stake. 17 seeds still under determined. The Cavs, for example, could be the second seed or drop all the way to the seventh seed. And with that, we welcome in CBS Sports NBA reporters Bill Ryder and Sam Quinn as the picture. Guys, I really hoped I could say this today. The picture becomes more clear, but it's not. <laughs> it's not clear with just two days left in the regular season, but let's begin things in the West and my how things can change in a day's time. On Thursday, it was the Nuggets who gained possession of that one. And by Friday's end, well, the T-Wolves snuck back in it following the Nuggets' loss and Minnesota's win over Atlanta. Currently, the Thunder, Wolves, and Nuggets have identical 56 and 25 records heading into their final games of the season. Now, it's a historical three-way tie atop of the Western Conference. As a matter of fact, it is the first time in league history, fellas, that we have, have a three-way tie, three teams with one game to go buying for the one seed. Now, if all three teams finish the season with a tie, it's the Thunder who takes the one seed. However, if there's a two-way tie, the T-Wolves hold the tiebreaker over the Nuggets and OKC. Okay, Bill, you got all that? <laughs> what do you make? I mean, what do you make of what's happening at top of the West? It's like a poison chalice this conversation. <laughs> Look, it, 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 you're right. You said it, it, it is historical, and I don't think anything sums up the state of the NBA and the historical level of parity that is going on right now outside of maybe the Boston Celtics. And I think that's a maybe that'll be answered in, in, in the postseason. And you said it surprisingly, shockingly, let's bl blame Victor Webb and Yama. Nobody or few of us saw that Spurs win coming against the Nuggets. We thought it might be competitive. What a comeback. Wemby's amazing. And you're right. Now the Thunder have that three-way tiebreaker. So they need to hope that they win and the other two teams along with them, Denver and the Timberwolves, also win or all three lose because they do not have the tiebreaker against the Timberwolves. So if the Timberwolves and the Thunder end up tied, then it's the Timberwolves. Sam and I were just talking about this. It, it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of ins. There's a lot of outs. And, and this close call and the fact the final game of the season is basically a pre-playoff reality for almost every team in the NBA. And almost every game on the schedule matters to that degree. It speaks to how riveting the sport has become under this model that a lot of us, myself included, criticized when it started. So credit the NBA. It is confusing. It is nerve-wracking. It is hard to follow. But it's really, really cool. Yeah, it, it's really fun and interesting to watch. And I am getting enjoyment out of not people actually putting forth their best effort because you want to get that one seed. You want that home court advantage. And it's not kind of just being lackadaisical here at the end. But uh, Sam, I'm spinning this to you, who ultimately walks away with the one seed. I'm going to go with Oklahoma City. I mean, if you look at the schedule, the Mavericks, who are the number five seed locked in, are playing against the Thunder on Sunday. Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic have been ruled out already for that game. I don't want to say that any win is going to be easy after what we saw between Denver and San Antonio tonight, but I feel pretty comfortable saying the Thunder are going to win that one. Denver obviously has a pretty winnable game against Memphis as well. So really it comes down to what happens between Minnesota and Phoenix. Look, I know the Suns won tonight. It's a feel-good win. Look at their week as a whole. They get killed by the Clippers. They almost lose to Bones Highland, and they need a big comeback against the Kings team playing on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. I don't trust the Suns in that game. I think all three of them are going to win. I think the Thunder are going to take the number one seed. I do want to point out, though, there is a major winner tonight that we haven't talked about. That Those are the Los Angeles Clippers and the Dallas Mavericks. They came into tonight thinking that Denver was going to be the number one seed. That probably is going to be the most exciting first round series between the Clippers and Mavs. We've obviously seen that series twice before. Both times, it was a really competitive series. You wouldn't want to come out of that matchup saying, oh, now we have to go play against the defending champs. Well, now the defending champs are probably not going to be on their side of the bracket. Huge win for Dallas and the Clippers tonight, and they had to do nothing to make that happen. That's a really, really good point because I don't think anybody wants to meet up with the Nuggets, not first round, not second round. I mean, honestly, this entire playoffs, but you talked about a feel-good win 
Well, let's talk about the bottom, the last spot in the West. Still up for grabs between the Suns and the Pelicans. Both New Orleans and Phoenix squeezing out those last minute victories on Friday. The Suns currently on the outside looking in. They still have a chance. They need a win and a Pelicans loss. So who grabs the final spot, Sam? I'm going to go with the Pelicans. Look, the Lakers tonight should have waltzed to one of the easiest wins of their season over the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies had 13 players listed out on their injury report, and that game went down to basically the final possession. <laughs> the Lakers right now, it's been such a tough week for them. Obviously, they've had injuries. You know, LeBron missed Sunday against the Timberwolves. Anthony Davis had the eye injury. The way they played tonight... I can't expect them to go on the road and play against the Pelicans team that's expected to have Brandon Ingram back. Zion Williamson playing incredibly lately. That team is really clicking. I'm just going to lean on the Pelicans to take the win, take it out of the tiebreakers hands. What happens to Phoenix doesn't matter. The Pelicans are going to win. I think they're going to get number six. Uh, Bill, the Suns have the T-Wolves on Sunday. Looking at what lies ahead, looking at what lies ahead for New Orleans, do they have a chance? I'm 100% I'm with, with Sam. I, I've got money with John Gonzalez over on the Beyond the Arc podcast on f several scenarios, and one of them involves the Suns that they play the Timberwolves. And I just want to take the money and just hand it to John now because Sam's right. The Suns have been <laughs> remarkably inconsistent. Now, look, that's a good win tonight. So it, it certainly is. But the Kings gave that away at the end of the game, especially down the stretch in that fourth quarter. And this is a New Orleans team. I know there's no Brandon Ingram right now. But three weeks ago, they were top 10 in offensive and defensive rating, and they really had the resume and the hallmark of the kind of team that can make a deep run in an NBA playoffs. And you look back and you say, all the signs were there. Maybe we didn't give them the credit they deserve. They're just a better basketball team. I'm with Sam. I think they win that game. That had, I won't even say his name. That head coach here in Los Angeles of the Lakers, who is not the most popular man on the face of the earth with the fan base, is not instilling a lot of confidence right now in the guys I'm told that he actually leads and the fan base here. It just it feels like everything is set up for the Pelicans to clinch that final spot. But I will say this, what an unpredictable day. And that Spurs game really sort of underscores that. Yep. Anything can happen. Any of these scenarios can happen. I, I'm with Sam. The most likely outcome is New Orleans locks that in. But who the hell knows based on what's been going on the last 48 hours? Like you said, anything can literally happen over these next two days. All right, let's move to the East, shall we? If you thought there was clarity in the Eastern Conference, well, I regret to inform you that you thought wrong. There is a three-way tie between the Magic, the Pacers, and the Sixers. The Heat are also still in that mix as well. There's four teams left for two playoff spots. The other two teams will be heading to the play-in. So, Bill... At the close of the weekend, who's locked in and who's battling it out in the plan? I don't know. This is, <laughs> this is like asking me to, to do the physics of how to get to the moon. So most likely outcome is the Bucks are going to be two and the Knicks are probably going to be three. But it's so, there's so many moving parts here and there's so many things that are going on. I, I honestly, I, I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows. This is a, such a confusing conundrum and cauldron of information you have to take in. And the reality is sort of like we see in the NFL sometimes where there's a final opportunity in a team. I remember covering a Chiefs team years ago where seven things had to happen for the Chiefs to get in the playoffs, and it did. This is kind of like that. There's so many moving parts. It feels like it's going to be Bucks. I, I, I know they lost pretty handily against the Thunder, but I, I think they're going to finish with that two spot. The Knicks are likely to be the three, but obviously they can go up, they can go down. Cleveland's been a mess lately. It's I, Sam, if you have a predictive model in front of you, I will hear it because I spent an hour trying to figure out what I thought. I just came to the conclusion, I don't think anybody knows, and I certainly don't. <laughs> I'm going to take the path of least resistance here. I'm going to say the Bucks beat the Magic just because of those teams in that mess in the middle – they're the only ones with a pretty tough opponent, right? Like Philly, I believe, plays Brooklyn. Indiana plays Atlanta. Uh, like, I, I'm going to assume, and look, I don't want to make these assumptions as if they're locks after what happened to Denver tonight. <laughs> I'm going to assume that the better teams take care of business. So, sure, I'll throw it out there. Orlando loses to Milwaukee, and they fall to the play-in. They play Miami, and then we have Indiana in the playoffs. 
We have the Knicks, we have the Cavs, we have the Bucks, we have Philly. There we go. That's all I can say. I'm sure we're going to get to Sunday, and 40 things are going to happen, and we're going to look at it and like, wait, how did the Heat get to the number one seed? I don't know. It's going to be something crazy. There's a graphic floating around there that shows all of the different possibilities, and you know how that people say, like, what did you take from school that you can apply to everyday life? Well, these permutations are something right now, because the NBA is certainly giving us plenty of options, and guys, uh, we can say whatever it might be right now but you're completely right Sam we have no idea and by Sunday evening we could be like well a team we had sitting at seven is now sitting at two who knows but nonetheless it's gonna be fun fellas appreciate the insight thank you and for more around the association you're gonna want to check out the beyond the art podcast Bill is joined each and every day by Ashley Nicole Moss and John Gonzalez breaking down the biggest storylines from around the NBA. The Beyond the Arc podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts.